Today I'm going to cover the stall to press in detail. Now the stall to press is a really cool progression to the press to handstand. So it goes from a straddle L sit position up into a handstand and back down. You can either start in the handstand, go down to the straddle L and then go back up or you can start from that bottom position. Some people can start from the floor, so sitting in the floor or some people need to start actually in the straddle. So a few different variations depending on flexibility and skill level. Something that I learned to do as an adult, so in my late 30s, um, I couldn't sit in a straddle, I couldn't do a press handstand, I could hold like a 20 to 30 second handstand. So what I'm going to show today is my progressions that I personally used and also the things that I've used with clients over the last couple of years. So first of all, what's the prerequisites? What do you need to have to be able to do a stall to press or at least start training towards it? So we need to have a decent handstand. So something that you can kick up to freestand in, hold for 10, 20 seconds consistently because the drills we're going to do requires that consistency rep to rep so we can just get into the handstand and then we can hit the drill from there to get the repetitions that we need. We need a press handstand so we just need a standard straddle press handstand. Now flexibility doesn't have to be amazing. Flexibility can be slightly bent legs if it needs to be but it just means that probably when you do your stall to press you're going to have to raise the hands up. Now this is cool work up your flexibility alongside working towards the stall to press and then eventually you'll be able to get it off the floor. So you can see where I started from, I definitely didn't have the flexibility to get the stall to press on the floor. And the first times I got through the movement, I had to actually raise my hands up onto mats or weight plates. Now ideally with the press handstand that you'll have a double, meaning that you start on the floor, you go up to the handstand, you come back down, you kiss the floor and you go back up again. And then we need a certain amount of straddle flexibility. So sitting in that straddle pancake position, we need to have something here. We need to be able to lean forwards and have our hands to the floor. We ideally need to be able to push up into a straddle L sit. Now if you can't push up into a straddle L sit, you can do it how I've done it for a few years. It's only recently I've been able to get this off the floor. So I actually climb into that straddle position or lower down into it from like a squat. It just means you're gonna to have to use a little bit more strength to start with instead of flexibility. And basically those last couple of things are gonna dictate how you do your stall to press training. Do you need to raise your hands up on a box for most of the exercises? If you can't sit comfortably into a straddle pancake position, if you can't hold a straddle L sit on the floor, then it does mean that you're gonna to have to do all these exercises raised. It's not an issue, you can still get the skill, it actually means the skill is gonna be a little bit more strength based, and then as your flexibility increases, everything will become more efficient. And then you can add the two together, so you can use the strength and the flexibility, and that opens up even more options in terms of the um, straddle press variations, or press variations in general, and the handstand strength moves. Now the best way to train for the stall to press is with the least amount of exercises. So ideally we would put it into this combination. So you would do a press off the floor up to a handstand. You would then do the slowest eccentric stall to press that you can do and you would finish in a straddle L sit and hold with control for five to 10 seconds. Now if you can do that, I would do repetitions of this with partial range. Now partial range just means you start at the top and you slowly come down and you kiss a target and come back up again. And remember these can be done with different heights. So I could do it with my hands on a box or onto yoga blocks, or I could do it off the floor if I have it. You just have to set up the target accordingly. Now if you don't have that, if you can't finish in that straddle or else position, all we need to do is, is work on your eccentric stall so coming down as slow as you can. You might need to bend the legs, you might need to keep your toes pointing down which keeps the hips a little bit higher up, relevant to the toes, and that will allow you to catch in that straddle L position, but with your hands raised up. And then what I'd do is I'd work the entry to the straddle L separate, build the strength and the flexibility to hold the straddle L with more control, and enter and exit it from lots of different directions. So you could go up into a squat, you could go into a kneeling position on a box, on the floor, you could step one leg into it at a time. There's lots of different variations you can do of climbing in and out of that straddle position. And the stronger, more comfortable we, we become there, the easier it is gonna be. Now, if you do struggle with that position, you are gonna to have to use a little bit more strength. So I'd recommend that you're also working tuck planche variations, tuck planche presses, or at least a handstand down to a tuck planche as slow as possible. You can go down to a kneeling position on the floor, but we wanna be passing through that low hip position with as much control as possible because the flexibility you're lacking is gonna mean you're gonna spend more time in that position with that hip low, which demands more strength. And then all we do is start to work that partial range with a little more detail. Now the partial range is a bit challenging to get the setup correct because you've got to go through your pathway. Now when you go through your pathway, your feet are going to go in and out slightly. So to set up a target, so if you put two yoga blocks down, it's easy to miss the yoga block. 
So play around with the position. You could use a different target that's slightly bigger. We've got these big square mats that we have at Aspen that we use. Um, or have someone there who can like fine tune the position of the blocks, mark them out on the floor, do something like that so you know where you're aiming for. But you could use something bigger. Obviously, if you're gonna raise your hands up, you need to raise the targets up as well. And then just slowly make that deeper and deeper in the pathway. So you're doing the eccentrics that will give you that full range of motion. And then you're doing your partial range that's gonna get you to get the eccentric and the concentric. And when we start to put both of those two things together and meet in the middle, we should get our stall to press. Now you could cheat or assist yourself in other ways. Now cheat obviously is a scary word, but we, if we cheat a little bit with bent arms as you come through, that's one option, especially if you're a little bit stronger but don't quite have the flexibility. That's one way of controlling the position and like hiking the hip up. You can use bands as well. There's some different ways of wrapping the bands around your hips and things. You can have a spot. I would prefer just to use the eccentric method and the partial range ideally, but then play around on top of that. It's like the press handstand, there's gonna be lots of different things that will help, but your main exercises are slow eccentrics and then controlled partial range. Now you'll see in some of these videos that I'm using socks on the floor. Now will the socks allow you to slide through? I still struggle with coming through and not touching the feet to the floor. You'll see some people get really good clearance between their feet and the floor and obviously this looks way better. But when you're learning, you can actually use the socks and the floor to help you. So as you pass through, you just keep your toes down for longer and slide and keep them down. And that can slow the movement down, especially on that eccentric. And then once you feel like you've stopped and held with control, you can then lift your toes up into your shadow L position. And if needed, you can bend the knees slightly if you need that. Now make sure if you are raising up in this position uh, and doing the eccentrics especially that you have somewhere to land on. If you're raising your hands up, it's very common that when you pass down and go through to your straddle L, you'll fall backwards. So just make sure that you have a cushion or a mat or have a box that a, has a big enough surface area so you can fall back and land on that if needed. Now if you're watching this and don't hit the prerequisites, obviously keep working on those prerequisites separately. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't play around with these other exercises. It just means that you're probably not gonna be able to put the full thing together until you have a strong press handstand. Until you have a strong handstand, until you have the mobility and flexibility to get into that straddle or L-sit position. Now let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding to the stall to press, press handstands, or handstand training in general. Normal deal, thumbs up and subscribe will be appreciated and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.